Hello Insiders, I'm Daniel Pickett, and I'm here to talk to you about a little history lesson. Before I played with Migos, before I played with Shogun Warriors, my main jam was the Fisher Price Little People. Of course, they were not called Little People back when I was playing with them. That was not coined until in the 80s. Uh, but we all know them now as the Fisher Price Little People. This is part of their humble beginnings. You can see these little geometric shaped uh, children. The earliest ones were made of wood. Uh, some of the original ones actually had uh, like a, a, a cardboard tube body wrapped in a decal with the wooden heads. But then they started uh, from here. You know, you can see there's two different geometric shapes. We have a triangle and kind of a rounded off square. Then they finally decided, hey, you know what works on a lot of stuff? Round pegs. So this is one of the early firemen from the earliest of play sets. They went through kind of an evolution with these. You can see the wood there. Then we have another wooden version with a few plastic pieces. He's got the, the plastic uh, arms and the hat. And then they went to all plastic eventually. I was always sort of confused by these as a child if that was his scarf or if those were actually his hands on, <laughs> on the end of those. But uh, I determined finally that they were his hands. So they had a wide range uh, starting with, we'll look at the, the Fisher Price family house. That's one of the earliest play sets. That's when they started releasing the, the family members, uh, shall we say. So we'll move the fireman out of the way. So the family members, you had, you know, you had dad, you had mom, had a couple of kids, uh, had a little baby, where'd I put the baby? There's the baby, right there. So you had, you know, a, a nice family assortment. Oh, of course, sorry, I forgot. You had the family dog as well. They all had vehicles. And then they started getting into these play sets. And these play sets, for me, uh, I still think are sort of some of the perfection in the toy world. There were endless, endless hours you could spend exploring these. Every square inch of these was packed with some kind of detail, with some fun, some little play, uh, just extra play value. And again, there was nothing electronic, there was nothing, uh, there was no articulation. It was just your imagination and this universe that you could create with these little people. So if we look at the house here, I'll move these guys over. One of the things, again, early on, this is even as, you know, a, a very small child, I was always intrigued. Like just the fact that if you pick up the handle, the place that's locked, and in order to open it, you have to lay it down a certain way and then it unlocks the inside. Like just for that, you know, thinking about a kid carrying that around because it's full of furniture and you can put figures in there. So stuff is going to roll around and that sort of thing. But you have to open it up like that to make it work. Now these play sets were plastic and then they had this sort of particle board. It was kind of like what all the puzzles used to be like back when I was a kid in the early 70s and 80s. This one's got a little bit of a, we lost part of the driveway here, but that's, that's all right. But you can see the, the garage has a rolling garage door, which I always thought was fun. They had these, uh, these were the earliest cars that you had. They were two seaters. They had a little place in back to put the kids, the dog, the luggage, and then they all had, it's clearly marked there, <laughs> for your gas. Because a lot of the play sets, when you got to uh, like the cities and things like that, had a little gas pump that would fit in there. So even before they had created the city play set, they knew they were thinking ahead and included that. So, you know, you can put mom in there, you can put dad in there. You can have the dog hanging out in the back and they would drive up into the house and you could close the garage behind them. There was a way out of the garage. There was a back door to it. 
You can see there's uh, furniture in here for the kids to sleep in. Th these are old, but uh, a lot of the place that's actually had a foam piece right here. So a lot of that's disintegrated over time, just like those of you that have like the Dagobah playset. Uh, the, the foam quicksand is gone, just to kind of age. That stuff was not meant to last forever, and most of it didn't, but the plastic still remains. All of the furniture fit the same peg format for the sofas, the chairs, the crib for the baby. There's a dining room table in here. They reuse these chairs in a lot of them in a lot of different ways. Uh, they show up again in some of the other, other play sets. But, you know, again, it's just sort of you change the color, you can add them to a stool, all sorts of things. They work for that same peg format. Everything fit together, everything worked together as one big cohesive universe. Now, this one is not as loaded with fun features as some of the other later play sets. Uh, but still, it, there was a lot of things you could do. You, you know, every sticker, every room sort of tells a story. There's a, there's a fireplace. The dining room table has a full meal on it. It's got the steak. You got your napkins, your, your utensils. But then there's things like the front door actually has a doorbell on it. That is one of the features on this one. So you take this little, here it is right here, and you fling it and it rings the doorbell. Inside here, there's a little bell that almost looks like a light fixture right above the door, up underneath here. And that's what they use to ring the doorbell. So, we'll move on to some of the other play sets that, uh, I remember I had this one as a kid, it was never one of my exact favorites, but that's because there was so much cooler things to come. And some of these are still in my collection today. They were that amazing. Another one of the mainstays in the Fisher-Price Little People library, and absolutely one of my favorites. This is one that is still in my collection to this day is the Family Village Playhouse. This is six buildings in one and then an entire city block for you to play with. It is loaded with play value. There's so much. I spent hours lost in this thing uh, playing with these figures in my childhood. So it again has the, the handle that locks it when you pick it up because again, it could be full of all your little people and furniture and cars and things. So you have to basically unlock it to open it. Fisher Price is always very clever about uh, a lot of times hiding the names or hiding uh, the item numbers in the, the actual toy itself. So they call it the, the family place at Village and that's actually the marquee here for the theater. You'll see that these buildings are numbered one through and uh, all the way around to six on this side and we'll get to why that is in a little bit Let's stay here Did I not unlock it properly so as you open it up you can see here the entire breadth of this thing all six buildings there's a great little underpass there's a bridge that, again, it's, it's all about the attention to detail. It's all about how they make this universe fit together. They were one of the original toy companies that really thought like that, like making all this stuff connect, which is great. So this bridge not only is the hinge for this, and you can take this out, it, it's on a little slider, but it's the exact width of the pegs of these people. So you can put people on the bridge. Like this little sturdy piece here, that's the exact size of the peg people. Like the, just every, every single thing they thought of in this, which to me has always just been remarkable. There's not an inch sort of wasted that, that was not thought about by some toy maker or some designer back then. And that to me has always been 
uh, so much of the charm of these sets. So we can kind of go building by building. If we come over here, we've got the fire station. Again, it's got a roll-up door. You're going to have the... It comes with a fire truck. as the fireman there. It actually has a ladder that extends on his truck that can pivot. So it's, you know, it's the... It goes up to the second floor of these things if you want. Here's another fireman. There's a little place on the back where you can put the dog, actually. And again, like I've, uh, I've talked about, there's a, uh, there's a little thing for the gas here. And there's uh, around the corner here, there's actually a gas station as part of the garage. So that is pretty, pretty neat. Then we have the, the, uh, the mail, the, posts, the post service. It comes with a mail truck and a little guy. It comes with a stack of mail. You can see we have a little something for the barbershop. We have something for the garage. And here's those numbers. So every single building has a mail slot as part of it. And it has six pieces of mail. And you can have the mailman. I'm doing this without looking at it. Deliver the mail to each building, including... You can have people mail stuff from the little mailbox out front, which is cool. This is not something that they had in mind, but as a child, I, I got endless satisfaction out of this. The spring on the street lamp would make this sound. And that cracked me up as a kid. I don't know why, just a fun fact. Then after here, uh, I talked about the marquee. You can see there's a little ticket window, so you can actually have someone back there selling tickets. I'll put this little lady right here. Selling tickets to people coming in, and then we'll flip it around in just a second. You can see inside, everyone's got an opening door that is functional. There's a little balcony on the theater up here. There's actually a little staircase that goes up so that you can get to like the second story here. All these things. One thing I forgot to mention about the fire station, one very important element. That would annoy parents. But as a kid, you thought it was amazing. So you actually have a siren for that fire truck. Then when we come over here to the bridge, it's got this stoplight on it. And it might be a little hard to see here, but there's a, a little wheel here that would turn it, and each thing, it would make it red, green, or yellow. Now, as a kid, again, I'm very young, I was fascinated by this thing. I was fascinated that anyone would care that much to figure that out and make that do that. And it doesn't just do it on one side. All four sides are open, so all four sides has, have a four-way stop, and the sticker works properly where it will stop people going this way and they will go the opposite direction. So to me, I always thought that was very, very cool. The hinge here is great. You know, you can use, you can reconfigure it. You can take this off. You can move them around, whatever you want. It just slides in like that. Then we come over here to the police station and there's a police, where'd my policeman go? Did I knock him over? Policeman. I think he fell out of there with a police car inside we'll show you in just a second there's a little jail that you can put people in then next we have the barber shop and we'll show you inside in there you can mail stuff there then we have the garage and the garage is the one that has the gas pump so any of your cars the police car the mail the fire truck the regular cars have that little peg and you can gas up your cars, which I always thought was amazing and did all the time. Then with the, uh, the garage, if your car is in the shop, you put it in here. It's got a little platform. You can raise it up to work on it. It also has a rolling garage door, has the mail slot in it. So let's see if we can flip this around. And we can kind of talk about the really cool stickers that they did for this set. 
because every surface has something like upstairs here this is the village restaurant it's got uh there's a little table that goes in here some chairs there's a sticker here on the side that says village restaurant inside you can see there's uh it looks like inside actually there there's a a, a dentist office on the sticker there so the restaurant, I guess I forget about that. The, the restaurant was actually on top here, was the patio. That's what you could get up to. But then inside here is that dentist's office. So again, it's even more than six buildings in this one playset. set. Uh, inside the post office, you can see it's got a loading zone. So you can actually, it's got a little ramp. So you, if you want to put the car in there, it fits that car. So you can back the mail truck up to that mailbox that was on the other side that I showed you. And when people put the mail in the mailbox, it goes in that car and out, which again, they thought of everything. I love that. Here's the theater you can see, little kids watching a movie. There's a screen in there, little bench. Here is the jail in the police station. So you put a guy here. Put him on the bench, lock him up, he's shut in. Probably help if I get that mail truck out of the way. Uh, the barber shop's down here. You can see it's got like bubble gum. It's got toys and things, all sorts of stuff. There's a mirror inside there. Up top here, this is kind of like someone's apartment. There's record albums on the floor. There's actually on the sticker. It's hard to see it at any angle unless you're sitting right here where I am, but uh, there's a cat sleeping on a pillow in there. Uh, just every, every square inch of this, someone really went through and said, all right, what kind of play value can we assign to this? And that is sort of an ingenuity that I don't see that much anymore in modern toys. And even as a small child, it fascinated me. And, uh, you know, just seeing these things again just brings all that, that back up. It's just, it's endlessly, endlessly interesting to me, the fact that they just built this world. And we're going to get to some more world right now. This is an iconic set. It's the Fisher Price Play Family Farm. And this is from 1968, which makes it before my time, but they still manufactured it well into the 70s. So I had one of these as a kid and still have one. Uh, this was just loaded. Again, it didn't have all the like features of some of the other ones, but it was still loaded with a lot of, you know, all the animals, the fencing, the tractor, you know, the grain silo, there was, there was just a lot of fun to it. And again, every single detail inside, uh, as far as just like the, the graphic work that they did on this, it all tells a really amazing story and gives you a lot of play value. Now, the grain silo was basically a big Pringles can. You could take the top off, it was hollow inside, you could store your animals and things in it. Uh, <clears throat> On the back, there's a door leading into it. The number on it is 915, which is again, the number for this toy. They found another way to sort of incorporate that. Uh, you know, just looking at the graphics sort of around it, there's corn sticking out of the top of the silo. There's a happy little mouse doing a dance down here. There's lots of little flowers and things around it. It just sort of ties, ties it all together. Now, one of the, the main functions that it had that would annoy a lot of parents, but it was endlessly fun to kids. When you would open up this main barn door on this side, that would open and then you would have this weird moo cow sound triggered by the door. So every time you open the door, you got that. Uh, there was the, the hayloft up top where you could keep the, the chickens. It came with a lot of animals. It came with pigs, it came with a cow, horses, sheep. It had these fences that you could put places, the trough, had the farmer with a tractor, the farmer's wife. I mean, there was just, there was just a lot of stuff to it. Uh, inside, 
There's a lot of detail in the, again, in the graphic work. Talk about the Spring Valley feed. There's a cat climbing something. There's a bunch of mice playing with some of the, the hay inside there. There's a horseshoe that's upside down on the back door. You should have it facing the other way so the luck doesn't run out, but they have it hanging down. <coughs> But just a lot, again, you know, everywhere your eye looks, there's something that they made sure helped tell the story of this piece. So, again, there's not a lot of, you know, nutty functions to it, but it all fits in, again, with this same universe building that they did, putting all these playsets together. All the peg guys fit in all the same stuff in the city, in the garage, in the house, anywhere you go these characters can interact with all the different pieces and that's cool you can see like here the tractor has the peg hole for the guy uh, and you can take that farmer and you can put him in a fire engine as a matter of fact i'm gonna put him in a fire engine because i have one right here there's a farmer driving a fire engine the farmer can drive a police car it's all part of the same shared universe which was just you know as a kid you didn't think that much about it but now, as an adult, you just know all that attention and planning that went into it uh, to make this a really cohesive line. And that's why Fisher-Price is still making amazing stuff today. I mean, they, they have really built their reputation. It's just kind of like what they're doing with Imagine X now. All that stuff it all fits together, where, whether it's Power Rangers, whatever. Fisher-Price really just has built a reputation for building these universes, which I always thought was very, very cool. So this is the farm playset. Again, I, I suspect many of you, if you're anywhere close to my age, had one of these too. And uh, let's take a look at some other cool playset. So after a while, Fisher Price got into licensing in their their play family universe. We call them little people. Back in the day, they were the play family. Uh, Sesame Street was one of them. They did this and a later one. Uh, they had Kentucky Fried Chicken, of all things. They had a McDonald's play set that was very popular. They even had a Holiday Inn set that was fully licensed. Now, the Sesame Street, there were two sets. Uh, I never had the other one. I did have this one. This has got to be hands down my favorite play family slash little people play set. Uh, again, it's one still in my collection. I'm missing a few pieces. I don't have Ernie, but just again, the, the detail they put into this. Again, the kid from the 70s grew up on Sesame Street. This was the show come to life. I mean, it was just the every inch of this thing, the graphic detail on it is just so killer that I just, I remember just staring at it for hours like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, there's that, there's that, there's that. So, it's uh, again an opening playset. They've got you know these extra pieces you can put places. A little Sesame Street street sign. There's a little fire hydrant that can go quite a few different places. And just you know as we look at this here on the on the back side, one two three. You know we know we've got Bert and Ernie's apartment upstairs. There's a mailbox down here. So we turn it around here. I mean, this, this, these sorts of things were just quintessential Sesame Street, like tire swing on the other side over here, I'll show you in a second, has the, the stacks of doors and the barrels. I mean, just it's just so packed with the detail from that show. Coming around here, Mr. Hooper store, Mr. Hooper, may he rest in peace. Uh, there's a little newsstand here that you can move around. And then this, this was always, I just, I remember staring at, at the detail on this. I just love this, the colors on this, uh, the depth of this, uh, just, you know, it, it was just, again, no inch was wasted by the designers of these guys. So we can open it up and uh, we've got it populated here somewhat. We have Bert and Ernie's apartment upstairs, and there's so much stuff just relating to Bert and Ernie. Uh, there's a framed picture of a pigeon, and you can also look in the bathroom. The bathroom door is open, and there's a rubber ducky waiting uh, in the bathtub, very, very Ernie-like. 
You have a little apartment downstairs here with a kitchen. It's got a table. Mr. Hooper's store has all sorts of sundries on the wall. He's got this full like soda stand that you can take out. It's got places for people to sit. So you can put say Cookie Monster here eating some soup. There's a little sticker on top. Here's the late Mr. Hooper brought to life in plastic. You know, Cookie Monster was an adorable, you know, concept that looked, looks just like the puppet. There was a sanitation truck. This actually does, it has the place for the gas nozzle, but they have filled in the hole. So you can't actually use it with, with the other sets. I don't know why they did that on this one. But there was a place in the back for a trash can. And hey, who hangs out in a trash can in Sesame Street? Oscar the Grouch. And he's got this great, you know, he can pop up. All you do is, uh, if you twist, he goes in. If you pull him up and twist, he stays out. So I love that little, that little figure. Big Bird was in this set. It was the first time you can get him. And he came with his nest. Again, interchangeable with everything else in the Play Family universe. This whole center thing, again, keeping with the educational aspect of Sesame Street, this whole center divider here is actual, it's chalkboard material. So it came with four pieces of chalk, came with this little Fisher Price eraser, so you can draw on that endlessly, write your numbers, write your letters, and use that to clean it off and start again. But again, you know, as you look at, like you had Grover was here on the TV, You've got figures of Gordon and his lady friend. There's just everything related back to what you were seeing on the screen for Sesame Street. And that's, that's really what I loved about this set. You know, the stained glass above Mr. Hooper's door, uh, just Mr. Hooper's store sign, just everything packed into this was the TV show come to life. And there was, uh, you know, in that time, there was nothing else sort of for me, like sort of licensed like that, that, you know, you could point to it and go, oh my gosh, look, that's the thing that I love to watch. Now I can play with it. So that was a big thing for a kid in the 70s. And this playset was huge. And that's why uh, it's probably my favorite in the whole play family line. So from castles with drawbridges and dragons to airports with full airplanes and a working luggage rack, you can see this whole universe that Fisher Price created back then. These play sets have really stood the test of time. Little people are still being made today by Fisher Price. They've evolved over time. They're all plastic. They're bigger. They're chunkier. A lot of times the play sets have electronics or interactivity. And that's fine, I guess. That's uh, what the kids of today want. But I don't think anything matches the charm, the ingenuity, and the creativity of what Fisher Price accomplished here with the Play Family and Little People in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I mean, this was endless hours spent uh, by many, many kids of that generation with these amazing play sets and just simple figures, no articulation. Uh, except for, you know, some of the larger things like dragons, but, you know, the people, really nothing. But lots of fun little thing built in. Everything was analog, and we were fine with that. We, we enjoyed the heck out of them. So, you know, again, you could visit a castle. You could visit a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Anything was open with this family, family world, village, playset, little people. I thank you very much for watching. It's been a delight looking back at these old toys. Uh, it's brought back a lot of memories for me. Maybe it did for you too. What was your favorite uh, Little People play set that you played with as a kid? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Please let us know. Thank you so much for watching. We got lots more toy goodness coming on AFI TV. We'll look back at old toys. We'll look at toys that haven't been announced yet. We'll look forward at things that haven't come out yet. We'll just sit and bask in plastic and love every single second of it because that's what we do here. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you very soon 
on AFI-TV.